Let's welcome in David Bonson. He's chief investment officer at the Bonson Group. David, it's great to have you here. And um, what do you think is going on uh, with these markets these days? Well, there's uh, obviously a lot of uh, volatility around the Ukraine headlines. But in terms of the particular story that, that you're talking about, I think that there's a great value. And we bring up Simon Property because we just simply think it's one of the most misunderstood stories on Wall Street. And we're very optimistic about its forward path, regardless of market skittishness. Does that optimism reflect a broader optimism in the reopening plays that would benefit from an economy that's continue? You know, people are confused by what part of the cycle we're in right now. What part of the recovery? Does the pandemic make this similar to past cycles or not? You know, is it sort of beating to the tune of its own drum? Curious for your thoughts there. Yeah, I think people need to stop thinking about uh, the reopening as if we're in that COVID context. Uh, the world is reopened. I mean, obviously not all of the world. China and certain parts are still dealing with this. Anyone trying to get a restaurant reservation here in New York City knows that things are back to open, back to normal in that context. Uh, the total dining reservations are only down 1% from where they were in March of 2019. Airline travel is only down 10% from where it was in March of 19. And we all know business travel and international travel are not reflected yet. And so I think in terms of people out and about doing what they do, which for Americans generally is spend money, I think that that part of the post-COVID life is fully normalized. And does that mean that near-term recession risks are pretty minimal? Well, a, a near-term recession would not end up being a byproduct of a declining consumer, which is where a lot of people, I think, are confused. They see that 70 percent of the economy and the GDP metric is usually consumer activity. So they're wondering how that looks with inflation pressures and yield curve indicators. But the fact of the matter is that what we have to be concerned about going forward is business investment. This was the part that held the economic growth down post-financial crisis for years, as we weren't getting enough capital expenditures. We didn't see a lot of industrial production, manufacturing, those metrics. And I think that what we have to see is strong business reinvestment. And we can't get that until we get clarity around this monetary side. So in a lot of ways, the Fed normalizing will help hmm. produce normalization and allow normal business reinvestment to continue. I haven't heard that take, and that's interesting. I don't know if you could extend that to the market. Are there stocks that would benefit if that starts to play out? And, and how will we know? Or, or what would the, the ramifications be? Well, of course, what you and I care about most in this context, our conversation is stocks. But I will say what people would benefit from the most, Kelly, is overall economic growth. And that's what would happen if we finally got sustained business investment. The reason we don't get it is excessive indebtedness and a Fed that has continued to coddle asset markets. So if the Fed can get to some degree of normalization, I'm not saying that they will, but I really hope they will. We need a Fed funds rate higher than 0%. We need a 10-year higher than 2 or 2.5%. Two Nobody believes any growth is coming. And so people are constantly rooting for the Fed to continue giving giving the market morphine when what the economy needs is a lack of dependency on that morphine. All right. So you also like the financials here, um, energy. Give me some specific uh, ways you would play this. Well, I can't say enough about the Simon Property story as a 5% yield and clearly one that proved they have the assets. They have a balance sheet filled with great properties. Some of those rents are going to decline and they have to repurpose. Some of it's going to be turned over altogether, but they just simply are holding a portfolio of value that is going to be monetized in the years to come. In financials, we're focused on asset managers that are fee-based businesses. Blackstone started to recover here lately. It was down earlier in the year, but Apollo is another one we still like. So everyone's talking about the banks and the yield curve, and I just think that the far more interesting story are fee-based businesses that are growing. Look at those asset managers. Even though you just said you, the Fed's got to stop coddling them? Well, the Fed needs to stop coddling all um, uh, aspects of capital markets. I don't think that Blackstone or Apollo need the Fed for them to go create value. They're incredible operators, real estate, credit, private equity. So we've seen a number of cycles. And ultimately, when you get zombie companies out of the way, the cream rises to the crop. I don't have any doubt that Blackstone is that cream. Very, very interesting. David, great to have your perspective today. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. David Bonson with the Bonson Group.